Rich Shea here, unboxing Gutenberg. Probably pronouncing that badly too. Okay, it's a game designed by, wow, Katrzyna Gioch and Wojcik Wisniewski. Wow, that's really bad on my part, probably. Published by Grana. Um, I picked this up because it looked interesting. I played a demo, uh, actually the full game, at uh, Origins. And it was fun. It has some very interesting different mechanics. Whether well, that makes it a great strategic game, I don't know. Here we have the, the rule book in the sort of typical uh, cream background, brown stuff to make it look old. And the components, little notes. Uh, there's historical stuff in here too. There's the uh, game board that everybody shares. Everybody has a separate printing house board for themselves and an initiative board plus a screen. The screens used to hide the initiative board. Uh, there are character tiles. There are uh, asymmetric startups available. Probably real gamers will use them from the get-go. We use them. They're interesting. Printing cards and refinement cards. An order is going to consist of one of these paired with one of these um, not randomly but you sort of choose them. Um, your specialty upgrades, first player token, it's very cute. Uh, wooden 3D letter block types. You use the letters as part of fulfilling orders along with colors and specialty capabilities. Um, there are planning cards, execution cards, patronage cards, some spare type. Um, one of the special powers gives you these big color things. But there are ink tokens, 12 each in blue, silver, red, and gold. Players need eight discs to track everything. Um, it says gray cylinders, but they're really spokes over here for um, the gears to fit on your board, which is a very interesting mechanism. Then 32 gears, all with different powers. Uh, 20 player markers, 34 initiative markers, current round markers, bunch of money, and a bag the ink goes in the bag. So when you set up the game there's a market of order and order embellishments, a random, random collections of ink, random cards for upgrading your um, capabilities, a random subset of the gears, and then there's a what do we call them here? Patronage cards that become available starting from the third round and patronage capabilities for people who can't claim cards. Um, you're going to have uh, your player board where you're going to track your four different embellishment capabilities, put your special player thing on here, have the posts to mount gears, and a marker to go through. You'll get a little gift when you raise any one of your things to a certain level for the first time. You only get the gift, uh, you can only get each gift like once in the game. Okay, um, a bunch of other stuff to the side, money, and the uh, initiative markers, which is a very interesting mechanism. So when you play, everybody turns their gears. You can have up to three gears. You turn the top one clockwise, one of the three sectors, which will turn the second one counterclockwise, which will turn the third one clockwise. Now you start the game with none, and you pick them up. You put them on the way you want, but you can only each use each gear once per turn and of course it's going to be the third round after before that gear capability comes along. And as you can see the gears have different capabilities some of them have nothing usually because the other two are more powerful. During the planning phase you're going to take however many of these little planning markers you have initiative markers and spread them out on the five potential actions an action that doesn't receive a marker, you're not going to be able to do it all. But the number of markers you place on each action determines who has initiative, who gets to go first in that, for that action. Ties being broken on turnover around the table. The number of tokens uh, varies in the game, but the way it sets up is there's going to be like I think it's seven, eight, nine, ten, with the first player getting fewer initiative markers than the other players. 
and then when you change turn order it actually turns out to be simpler than you think you just everybody gives the person who's about to lose first player one of their initiative markers and then all the numbers are correct then you execute the plans you go through taking orders um, you you basically draft from the available orders one order one set of embellishments and go through that take inks you can take the first ink for free, the second ink costs one, and the third ink costs two, but you can only take from one of the four sets. And it turns out that, like, you could take from somebody else, let's say somebody else, there were three here, they took the free one, somebody else could buy the one or two of the remaining ones. Okay, so any inks that are on the board are available to you, but only from one set of inks in initiative order develop specialties there's four cards with two things on them whatever they are you go up one in your track for each of those or you can forego a card and just go up one on any track when you pass a level like something gets to two you get a free ink when something gets to three you get another ink that's a free order and that's a uh, take a letter okay you can improve your printing house by selecting one of the available gears and dropping it onto an empty slot, rotated the way you want. Remember that you can't use that section immediately, I don't think. And it's not clear. I guess I'd have to read it in more detail to see if you can use the gear you immediately placed um, or not. So you can only use each gear once a turn. You put this little marker on it to show you did that. Um, patronage cards. You basically get eight points if you can take one of these cards which you might have to pay ink for and or you'll have to have a capability level these are capability levels or have certain type you pay the ink the other ones you just have to demonstrate you have them and again it's an initiative order so you can get uh, clipped off something be somebody gets it ahead of time then um, people fulfill orders clockwise starting with the first player okay you basically have to have all the type available and you can only use a piece of type once per turn so you don't lose it so in subsequent turns you can use it in another order if you want to earn more you can pay for either or both of the refinements the way it would work is uh, that's seven guilders for fulfilling the order this would be four prestige points if you also discard a red and a gray ink four more prestige points if you are um, I think that's illumination is at five and your leather tooling or whatever carving is at one and if you fulfill both of these you get the achievements plus you get the bonus achievement thing the bonus might not be achievement points it might be something else you can buy type anytime you want that's one of the things but it costs the number of type you will have once you've made the purchase so your third one costs three and your tenth one costs ten um, so it can get expensive to have unlimited amounts of type available but you could um, I think I talked about refinements colors decorations the rewards might be points um, and it might be some other thing then you set up the next round where you discard and replace the order cards the inks the specialty cards and replenish the gears refill move the round marker at the end of the game you're gonna get six points for specialties at level six three for five one for level four patronage cards that you've accumulated are eight points each and every three guilders will be worth a point the most fame points that's the things like this is the winner of the game okay um, there's an automata um, solo version of the game that you can play there's um, an article on the origins of printing uh, short biographies of famous printers who are included in the game with their special powers um, explanations of the gear rewards the characters special rules and just some thank you stuff on the back so the game uses um, pretty thick cardboard for things especially considering that you have these um, gears with there's the three sectors and the gears interlock those are the gilders there's more gears this gilders spare type 
Um, those are not the actual types you use. Those are just in case you need more later. Um, and the backs of the gears, of course, because you sort of want to randomly draw them, they're stored that way. The game board, which is, I believe, uh, two players on one side, and yeah, I think this is the two player side. It has a smaller collection of inks uh, and gears available during the game. Let's see, you can see pretty much the whole thing, right? Um, this is the victory point track. It's kind of embellished around here, but uh, there it is, prestige points. And these are the the upgrade your capabilities, make the orders, upgrade capabilities, get gears, privilege things, and then of course fulfilling orders doesn't need a board space. On the other side, for more players, um, for three players there are things, some things that are only available for four players. Uh, you do three of these or a fourth one for four players. It's pretty clearly indicated what is only for four players. Four players. Um, there's more of these cards that come out. The cards remain available um, for the whole game until somebody claims them. So you can like back up and get ones. They just are available slowly. Here's, um, oops, put it this way, the player board. Um, this punches out so you can uh, track things and they don't like slide around too much and the little around things can go in the holes to track that. The, um, the gray pieces we'll get to actually go in here probably semi-permanently and then you can put a gear on over the post. So there's um, four of those. These are um, the artwork, the player screens, which you use to hide your initiative choices. But it also has a sequence of play, an explanation of the symbology, and how many initiative things each player gets. Okay, now, I like the art a lot. Uh, cats, well, I don't know. I guess they kill the rats that eat your parchment. Um, the artwork's fun. The player things are fun. They've, uh, you know, try to be some inclusive. Women did run printing houses, but only after they'd inherited them from their deceased husbands, because that's the way that kind of guild and ownership worked. Women weren't allowed to run a business unless they were a widow. Um, here's the first player marker. It's lovely. Um, five guild markers. The giant inks that go with one of the special abilities. The, uh, Ordinary inks, and more one gilders, more markers. Uh, these are the tokens for the ten different um, starting player things. Each of them gets a different starting capability. Um, I think this is. Get a, you don't need all the types. You can switch your capabilities around. Uh, you can use one of the things on a gear twice in a turn. Gutenberg gets an, I don't know whether he gets an extra letter or a discount. Uh, start with a gear or two gears, and but it's explained in the rules, and start with some capabilities already set, one at one and one at two, and uh, wild ink. There's the initiative boards, and oh, they're all different color embellishments on the side. That's lovely. And, wow, on the back, if you want to go for pure decoration, you can do it from the back, or you can do it at the front so you can see what you're actually doing. Um, the bag that the ink goes in, it's a very serviceable bag. These are the cards for... Um, these, are the, these are embellishment cards. You need a blue ink and this at level three, this would be a very moder modest embellishment. Um, some of them, you know, they get more points if they're harder to do. Um, let's go through 
this uh, too extremely difficult to do. Um, I'll let you upgrade a capability, I think. This is uh, the capability choices go up, well, twice on that one, one each in these. So they're variable. Um, these are the bonus things. If you have that at three and that at four, then you could claim the eight points for that if you get there first. And there's just various combinations of these. Um, this is, oh, I think this is for the automata. Yeah. Yeah, I think those are the cards for the uh, solo play. Orders, you need these to type, but that one's fairly modest. And then they get a little trickier. And then of course they get, you better have a lot of type. Of specific kinds and then more embellishments there and then these things that's very nice they actually come box this is the way it came I didn't do anything about this um, this box is full of type and it's literally pieces of wood with a letter reversed you could actually put these in a block and print with them if you wanted to. I wouldn't recommend it, but you could. Um, these are um, colored cubes for the players. More type. Um, I'm not sure. It's, oh, I think the type meant to be dumped all together in the type box, and then you put the player things in there. Um, the initiative markers will go into one of these. Where are the initiative markers? They're hopefully in here. Yes, those are the initiative markers. Gilders will go in here, but for now it has the uh, player cubes. You can see here the little gray posts that will go in the. I don't know if I should do this now or not. But the gray posts that go in here. Yes, to hold the gears in place. Okay, so I think that's all the components. As you can see, uh, and it's a lovely game. I love the artwork, but the gameplay is very interesting because the way you use the initiative markers and the gears and having to like compete for the colors and, but you have a lot of mitigations of different kinds. Your special powers and your gears let you manipulate um, the, the ink choices quite a bit. Otherwise, I think it would be very restrictive. So I enjoyed my play of the game. I like the mechanics a lot. I love the look of the game. So and I hope you can see enough about what happened to decide if it looks like a game you'd be interested in. But certainly, if you get a chance to play it, I would definitely give it a try. Well, thanks for watching, and hope you're all doing well. Bye for now.